Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Landra, and thank you all the participants. I apologize. I don't even have the excuse to be in some exotic country. I'm sitting in Washington, D.C., and still the technology failed us to be able to uh, connect. Um, but the discussion until now has been extremely helpful, even for our own thinking. And, uh, um, and I I wanted to share with you today, in eight minutes, the presentation that is going to be shown um, has a few slides. It's available a longer presentation for all the participants um, and any discussion offline if any of the topics that I'm going to rush through is of interest specifically to any of the participants. Um, I guess that the difference in point of view with respect to uh, the excellent remark that Camino just, uh, uh, um, and comments that Camino just raised is uh, the focus of the World Bank. We are one of these international um, players that should be do more in this area. And um, I wanted to simply give a quick overview of why we should be doing more, why we also internally we are thinking that we should be be more engaged in this topic, what we are doing and what we are not doing and where the glasses are empty. So um, if you look at the uh, first slide, that, uh, actually the slide that is titled Story from the Ground, um, those are examples of concrete cases that came to my desk for advice on how to improve governance and clearly address uh, corruption and strengthening institution in various countries. And I started to collect this story anecdotally, uh, and you can imagine I have only two slides touching on these stories and I was very selective, because I wanted to be able to give a sense of how challenging it is to be able to address the issue of corruption and why corruption is actually linked to politics and dirty money. If you pick, for example, these are all real cases, and uh, you know you can send me your guesses via email of which country we are talking about, and I will send you a little prize if you um, <laughs> if you get it right. Uh, also, my colleague at the World Bank, I use this material also for training inside with colleague at the World Bank. They do not recognize the country, so it's not that easy. But these are the cases that we are facing. Um, you know, you have a country emerging from conflict that, that they are facing very uh, constrained in terms of capacity, and yet there is a very strong patronage system. How do you start to work on that? You have oligarchic country where you, the capacity is higher, but the system is much more difficult to break into the system to promote governance. And so if you see, uh, you can go to the next slide, but there are also, I try to pick uh, examples both from Africa, East Asia, Latin America, um, so that uh, to give you a sense that there is not one region of the world that is facing this problem, but is very common in all the countries that we try to support with our knowledge. Um, and it can take many different forms. So what you should get out of this story is really we are facing a very diverse problem that we sometimes like to talk uh, to label as corruption because corruption now in 2013 um, is not anymore a controversial term but if we talk really uh, seriously about this issue you can see that this actually is a problem about corruption politics and power and the mandate of the World Bank as, a, as an organization limit us uh, to, and we are not able to engage in the politics of the country, but we can work on the issue of corruption and anything that might facilitate or increase corruption risk. And this put that in the situation to having to deal with this issue uh, related to organized crime, related to dirty money and politics. So if you um, really um, then ask why will the World Bank, even if it's allowed by the mandate, worry about corruption, you need to think that uh, in terms of developmental impact. Uh, for us, the most important issue is uh, not only to make sure that we as international civil servants, we are using appropriately 
appropriately uh, the resources that we've been given that are public resources. That's one small part of the of the equation. The most important part is that are these resources that we are using been having an impact from a developmental point of view in the country. And what we have come to realize, and when I first joined the World Bank in 93, this was not the case. So we have come a very long way since then. We have realized that unless we tackle, we openly discuss issues related to governance, corruption, and politics, we, our impact, the impact of what we are trying to do, is very limited. So if you go to the next uh, slide, it, it just gives you some example of why and try to motivate you why it's important for us to deal and talk about corruption. Corruption increases inequality within the country so that the usually citizens with the lowest income are the ones penalized the most. But also businesses, the smallest businesses, are the ones penalized the most. So corruption seems to act as a regressive tax, first point. If you go to the next slide, then you can see that also when we have countries that are struggling, and this is not very recent data, but there is a reason why I'm using not so recent data, so nobody can be upset about these numbers. But uh, if, you, if you look at a uh, uh, country that they are struggling with the issue of corruption, you also see that this is often associated by another um, governance issue, what we call state capture. And what do we mean? The capture by elites, by groups, of different parts of the state machinery, of how the government works, the laws that they are passed, the regulation that they are passed, the uh, decision implemented by the judiciary. Um, and this is incredibly important because here we are starting to get into and to have a better understanding. This is not, we're not talking only about the little bribe pay to uh, the police officer or to the teacher. Uh, we are talking of something that does affect how the country runs and the decision that they're made in terms of investment for the private sector, for example, or the decision that they're made in, um, on who is supposedly uh, be sent to jail and who is not. So uh, this for us has become such an important piece in the development puzzle, as I like to call it. We cannot make a significant progress unless we are able to talk and begin to address this issue, this broad issue of corruption and politics. So if we go, there have been a lot of work done by the bank since the beginning of this, uh, when, of this realization. And uh, if you go to the next slide, I just want to give you an overview of what, do, what, what has been our approach. Uh, you should be at the slide that say key elements of the World Bank strategy. Um, how do we interact and where do we focus? We try, at least uh, we are trying, to do what also Camino was suggesting that is very important uh, for, at the, for an international actor. We focus at the country level what is needed in terms of capacity, in strengthening the institution, really building a, con a culture and a system of a accountable institution and transparent institution. But we also work at the global level with the supporting initiative that help us to then um, understand better and maybe reduce the risk of this flowing of money from one country to the next. Um, here, the Stolen Asset Recovery Initiative is one of these global initiatives that has been introduced to try to support this idea that you don't only need to strengthen the institution at the country level, you also need to you have one minute left, with Francesca. other international donors. You need to facilitate collaboration by different countries. Because without this, you are not really making the progress that you could be making. Um, because there are, these are issues that are transnational in nature often. Um, if we uh, then go to the next slide, and as I say, I apologize for rushing through, uh, looking at the supply and the demand uh, uh, and where we focus our, um, our uh, um, 
um, engagement. This is, should resonate, and I'm, I'm the last talking of this panel, and many of these issues have already been, have already been touched by my colleagues. So until a few years ago, the focus was really much more on what we call the supply side, side how you strengthen the, the system of a country. And then we started to realize, and this is where the politics and the organized crime um, issue come to play a role, that we need also to um, focus on what is called the demand side. So how, and there we bunch a lot of issues that are relevant for the discussion today. How officials are elected, um, how the political party are financed, how a parliament can be effective, can we have an independent judiciary, how do we promote a free press and access to information, civil society, how do we get them to be engaged and capable to be engaged and participate in the policy dialogue. And this is very important and this is a difficult territory to navigate because uh, um, it involves politics. That's the main reason. So, summing up the next slide, you know, we, it's very important for us to talk about corruption governance and uh, all the problems that they are surrounding these two areas. And we try to be very much uh, mindful of the fact that we need to look at what the country might need to strengthen the institution and understand how we can engage in the most effective way. We need to build capacity. And so it seems that there's very much an optimistic view and we make progress, we are all happy. Unfortunately not. Um, and here, what I would like to show you, is, and this is very much touch on the topic of this panel. In the next slide, so this is data again that nobody can uh, criticize. The level of corruption based on an enterprise survey uh, throughout the, form, the country of the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. And you can see those arrows should be showing that a lot of this petty corruption, I mean, petty corruption, little bribe payment has gone down from 2005, 2008. And everybody is celebrating. Fantastic. Let's move on to the next slide. This is about diversion of public funds. Same country, same period. Here things are not that good. And this gets to the core of the link between organized crime politics, state capture. Um, so maybe we are much better now in uh, reducing the payment of little, um, of little bribes, but we still are struggling to understand how to support the country and how to reduce the risk of this large misuse of funds and abuse of power. Um, next slide. So what why did I say at the beginning that the glass is half empty? Because first of all, we are realizing more and more, and might be obvious for many of you listening to my remark, but for development uh, uh, practitioner, it wasn't as obvious that corruption is really takes different forms. Not only because it takes place in different countries, but also because it has a different nature. Um, and it can take many different uh, um, forms, and it will require specific solutions uh, that address that specific form of corruption. But more importantly, for what we are discussing today, if you look at the last bullet of, the, of that slide, when we think about this issue that we are uh, facing and the request for support to improve the institution of the country and think about the example that I show you at the beginning of my presentation very quickly. What we are actually asking, what we are, what is necessary is a reallocation of power and rents and how power and rents are really being allocated in a country. And this is very challenging. So I wanted to stop here because the World Bank in this area has been uh, walking um, has been moving not as fast as maybe some of us would like, but we are a large organization. But we are very much aware that because when, when it comes to corruption and governance, we have made some progress in some area, now we are facing the challenge in the most difficult area that is really the area that has linked with the organized crime and the politics. 
And it's also something that for us is opening a new um, uh, frontier because we are also realizing, and I'm not, I don't think I say anything new, the World Bank has a mandate to operate with the country that are not OECD country. And now we are realizing that these problems often involve and require the collaboration of countries that are not part of our natural counterpart. So this is a problem that is common to every country. And now we are actually looking and asking collaboration support from countries that usually had not been our partner in the past. So I, as I say, there is a lot of material in the presentation. Um, I'm open to any question and clarification. Thank you very much.